guys, this is Jake from Jake's Offshore Adventures and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going out off Isla Mirada spearfishing with Michael and his wife. It is their first time out with us at Jake's Offshore Adventures, so uh, we are here to show them a good time and you're going to join along with us. So right now we are headed out to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, this is where we go and dive. So we're heading under Indian Key Bridge right now and plan is to go out to a couple of the wrecks and see if we can spear one of those African Pompano. So just so you guys know, our typical ride out to the reef and the wrecks is anywhere between 25 and 30 minutes. Um, we run out of Worldwide Sportsman Bayside Marina in Isla Mirada, so we have to start all the way in the bay and work our way over to Indian Key Bridge to head out. This is actually Seymour Maps. Um, wanted to show you guys this quick. That's what we kind of use out there on the reef, looking for new dive spots and places to go shoot new fish. And you can't beat this crystal clear blue water on the way out to the dive site. One of the best things I love about the Keys is the water is just so gorgeous here. So here at Jake's Offshore Adventures, we like to be very personal with the customers. That's why we're only a private charter. We do not do spot trips. So you book the whole entire boat, you get it all to yourselves, um, and you get me to yourself. So um, myself I'm, and my mate are always going to help you get into your gear, help get out of your gear in the boat. We always change out your tanks for you. So when you come down, all you got to worry about is diving and having fun. You want to uh, grab your fins and your mask, and you can head over here. Once I get everyone in their gear, then it's my turn to get geared up. Alright, I'll see you there. Alright, everyone okay? Alright. Once we get to the ball, I make sure everyone's okay. I tell them to put their regulator in their mouse. And uh, I tell them they can start uh, to deplete their BCD and descend down the line. Um, this line here connects all the way down to the bottom of the wreck, so I always recommend them to hand over hand all the way down the line. Um, once they get down there, I load both the guns um, and I pass it to uh, the shooter and uh, we go on our dive. Um, we really weren't seeing too much of uh, this dive. If you look over there in the distance, there's a pretty big goliath grouper right there. and I was just throwing out some grunts and swimming around the wreck. They were just really enjoying the dive in itself, so um, we weren't too worried about catching fish on this dive. I'm not going to show you guys the whole wreck. Um, you guys are just going to have to come down and dive with us if you want to come check out this wreck. Um, but, you know, goal was to get him swimming around with a gun, feel what it feels like to be hunted underwater, and uh, unfortunately we didn't really see any shooter fish this dive. You know, we get a lot of people who come down and, you know, they expect to go and shoot fish every dive. Um, but I try to explain to them, you know, if they're hunters or not. Um, they don't go to the deer stand every day in the tree and uh, shoot an eight-point buck every single day. So, um, but, you know, there's always cool stuff to see down there. I always like to say, um, if you don't shoot a fish, then, you know, you still have a good dive. And uh, that's what it's all about. So at the end of each dive, I also unload the customer's gun, so that way it doesn't hurt any of your guys' chests. Um, these guns are pretty hard to load, and uh, once we get up to our safety stop, we uh, wait there for three minutes, and uh, it's time to head up. So once we get back in the boat, um, we decided to flip a coin actually to go to the reef or go to another wreck. And coin landed on head, so we decided to do another wreck uh, close by and let fate decide whether if we're going to have dinner or not tonight. 
Unfortunately, um, you know, we got down there, I went and checked the anchor, we had a good anchor hold, and uh, we're on a new wreck now, but uh, the life just wasn't on the wreck at all. And I kind of got my hopes down for shooting a fish on this dive, um, but fortunately, uh, we actually ran into a spot here with lots of life. Um, there's a bunch of fish around, and uh, there's actually a couple fish that were shooters, just out of season, some groupers and some hogs. Um, but other than that, it was a really cool dive. They'd never seen this area before, so um, it was a very cool experience. You know, there's some nice parrot fish swimming around. A nice goliath grouper and you know for people who don't get to see that stuff every day it's pretty cool and i forget to remind myself that it is so towards the middle of the dive we actually had some medium-sized yellow jacks show up these fish are shooters at any size um, obviously we try to always shoot the big ones but when nothing else is swimming around um, it's a good way to practice your shot and you know give the customer a chance to shoot the gun and get some fish on the boat so usually once the customer shoots the fish, depending on how big it is and how experienced they are, they, I let them fight the fish. Um, and once they get it in kind of close, I try to grab the fish for them. Um, that tends to be the most dangerous part is when you get that fish close to you. Um, I like to brain and bleed the fish for the best meat quality. I also take their guns and I reload it for them so they're ready to shoot the next fish. So Michael ended up with around a thousand PSI at the end of the dive. So I took his gun, unloaded it, and we were starting to go up. And I look over and I see this big thing over that piece of structure right there. And uh, of course it was an African pompano. I always tell these guys too, I'm like, it always happens at the end of the dive, so try to conserve air as much as possible. I had plenty of air. We had good biz, the customers were good divers, so uh, I decided to take this shot on this African Pompano. So typically, I'm not there to shoot the fish, you know, the customers are there to shoot the fish, but um, we're 100 feet down right now, and they had 1,000 PSI left, and I had around 1,502 grand left in my tank, and it was just unsafe to actually put the customer on this fish, so for the sake of dinner, um, I always talk to my customers before, um, if I see a really big fish and you don't have an opportunity on it, do you want me to take the shot? And most likely everyone says yes, so um, at the end of this dive, I was lucky enough to be able to secure this uh, African Pompano for dinner. Typically, I actually really wouldn't pursue this fish in most scenarios. Um, this was a really small group. It was just a husband and wife, and I had just dove with them on the previous dive, and they were really good divers. So um, I trusted once they were on the line that they were going to make it up safe with the amount of air that they had. Um, so I went ahead and pursued this fish. After braining and bleeding that fish, I joined them on the safety stop, made sure that they were all okay, um, and then I started to secure this fish and reload my gun. This right here is actually a great example of a buzzer beater fish and um, why you guys should always just try to enjoy the dive and not worry about hunting, because typically when you put a gun in your hand, you use a lot more air. But Super awesome fish, definitely made the trip and happy for Michael to be able to take some videos and uh, bring some of this fish. So once you guys get back to the surface, you'll see that yellow line hanging off the back of the boat.
that's where you'll take your fins off and one at a time you'll go up and take your gear off and uh, hop back in the boat. And uh, right here we're actually gutting the fish, um, hoping to get the best meat quality out of it. Once you gut the fish, then uh, we'll pack the stomach with some ice and uh, throw it in the cooler. Um, his cavity is open, so we'll throw some ice in there to help cool down the fish faster and uh, have the best meat quality. It's called a yellow jack. So these are actually really great sushi and sashimi. Um, and they're delicious. Delicious a little soy sauce. Yeah. Um, fry it up, sear it up. Is it's, it a white, white tub? Uh, yeah, white meat. Yeah, this is, so this is, these are only, the only two species of jacks you'll eat in the best tasting. African Pompano obviously takes number one, yeah. um, but this is definitely the second. Mm -hmm. Every other jack species will have like red meat and stuff like that. Yeah. These have really nice meat. Um, I don't super, like a greasy meat. No, so th these it's aren't, these like aren't this. oily. Yeah, these yeah. are, these are far from oily. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to put um, thank you guys so much for joining Jake's Offshore Adventures. And uh, don't forget, we run charters down here in the Florida Keys. And if you're looking to get out in the water to shoot your trophy fish, um, then give me a call and we'll get you out there. Thanks again. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And we'll see you next time.